Hi, everyone. That's nice to be here again. Oof, I'm freezing. I looks like they think if I'm Russian, then I like cold. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> My name is Artyom, and as Natalie just said, I work at Wayfair in Berlin office. Uh, there is uh, six hours time difference between Berlin and Boston, so it's 10 p.m. in Berlin. If I fall asleep at the stage, please bring me some coffee. <laughs> uh, here is my Twitter. I am Sepegan. Send me some dog pictures. <laughs> I would really appreciate that. Thanks, George, for the idea. Why do I have this arrow here? I also created this little tool called React Style Gadist. Uh, it's, React Style Gadist is a tool to help you develop React components and generate style guides to share them with your team. It's open source. If you haven't checked it, it might be useful for your team. And this is the mock-up. Ooh, scary. The mock-up of a page we're going to build today. Not the whole thing, of course, because we only have half an hour. But we're going to build a layout for this. But first, I want to ask you a question. Do you think we can implement this layout without writing a single line of CSS? Raise your hand if you think we can. One, two, yeah, three, four. Raise your hand if you think we can't. <laughs> yeah, definitely more people. All right, we'll find out later what's the correct answer. But first, uh, let's go back in time and talk about the history of uh, layouts uh, and styling for applications. I think these are the main, important, most, the most important steps, and we'll have a look in more details into each. Then first, HTML tables is the real, real old school of HTML layouts. We didn't have uh, CSS back then, so tables were the only way to create layouts, and uh, presentational texts were the only way to style content. So we were using uh, texts not for their semantic meaning, but for their look, which were not great. And also we were hard coding uh, values like fonts, uh, colors, sizes, right in the markup. So our interfaces were not very consistent. But then we got CSS. With CSS, we were able to create amazing websites, but we didn't know how to write maintainable styles. We were putting everything in the same global namespace, uh, giving class names, random names, or even selecting HTML elements directly. So it was very easy to change something on one page and to break something on a completely different page. And this kind of code was almost impossible to remove. So this, this kind of CSS jokes were from that time. So there, we realized that to make styles maintainable, we need to limit the number of features of CSS we're using. And this was time of uh, CSS conventions like BAM, uh, object-oriented CSS, Max, and some others. So the idea was we are using only class names. We're not styling uh, HTML elements directly, not using IDs, and not using cascade. And also, we're scoping all the styles of a particular component. So styles of one component will never affect styles of another component. And that solved a lot of problems with uh, maintainability of styles. But in the end, we got this gigantic markup with long styles, with long class names. And also, we had to write a lot of styles for each component because we had to specify all the basic things like fonts, font sizes, colors, and so on. Next step, atomic CSS. 
I think it was not very popular, and I have some ideas why. So the idea of atomic CSS was we have a lot of generic reusable class names, each change a single CSS property, like flex is defined in display block, items baseline defined, align items baseline, font sans defined font sans serif, and so on. It solved the problem of sharing styles. In this example, we don't have any custom CSS, but we still have this gigantic markup. And before we invented component-based framework like React frameworks, it was very hard to share markup. So every time you wanted to use some component, you had to copy-paste a lot of HTML. So now the primitive components complete the evolution cycle. We're back to defining our layouts in markup and back to font tags. This looks suspiciously close to HTML 2.0, but this time it's slightly different. With components, we're not writing font color, for example, Rebecca purple. We're writing text color secondary, and secondary is a token that defines secondary color for our project. So we can have a map of all these tokens with color, font sizes, and everything in a single place. And these values will be used every time we need them. So it will be easier to change them once and globally. And our interfaces will be consistent. And also with components, it's very easy to share markup. We've done this shift once with uh, event handlers in React. This code doesn't scare us anymore. We know that thanks to React, it's fast and maintainable. And the same idea works with styles. And we can implement it also in a fast and maintainable way. I talk a lot today about components, CSS and JS and other fancy stuff, but I'm not suggesting you to forget CSS. I'm suggesting to build on top of this knowledge and I'm suggesting to write better CSS using the tools that are available today. And I think this tool is components. So let's look how can we implement such layout components. I think there are two common ways. First is discarding CSS, and second is embracing CSS. So the first approach, discarding CSS can look like this. We have specialized components for everything. Uh, they have props that we need to learn, that we need to remember. We need to know how to use a particular component to implement a particular layout. So it's a lot of learning new things and remembering stuff. On the other hand, uh, the second approach, embracing CSS, you probably understand what this code does because it reuses your CSS knowledge. These are the same CSS properties and values you already know, but they are just written in slightly different syntax. <coughs> so no need to invent new APIs all the time. Use something that you already know Next consideration is responsiveness. Again, I see two popular ways to do this. The first way is to use props for each breakpoint. And the second way is to make all props responsive. The first approach may look like this. We have some column with three values of something, of some property, which is different from small, medium, and large screen. But by looking at this code, it's quite hard to say what this property does. Probably it's with, but I'm not really sure. Also, what if we want to make padding larger on larger screens? If the author of this component did not take into consideration this uh, use case, we can do this. So on the other hand, if we make all props responsive, we can do anything we want. We can define different ways for different 
screen sizes, we can define different paddings, we can define different font sizes. We can even make, we can even use Comic Sans font on larger screens if we want. It's all available because all props are responsive and they all work the same way. Again, we learn this convention once and we apply it to every prop. And the last thing here is access to design tokens. So we're not hard coding color names like white or black or we're not hard coding hex values. We use tokens to refer to these values that are defined in our zim file, which is the single source of truth for this design values for the whole project. So here we're, we have a div that has uh, inverted text like light and dark background with some medium padding and we take these values from this zim file. So they are consistent and we can change them once for our project. So all good examples were from a tool called style system. Style system is a tool that allows you to create components where you can change style, styles using props. Why I think it's good? First, all props are camel case CSS properties, so you already know them, just the syntax is slightly different. But you can apply a lot of CSS knowledge you already have. And you can use many of CSS techniques you would use in plain CSS. All props are responsive. You can either pass a single value or an array of values for different screen sizes, which is again, I think, nicer syntax than defining breakpoints manually. Components are constrained by design tokens. Instead of using hard-coded values for colors, font sizes, white space and colors, we're using tokens. So our UIs are consistent. And it works with most CSS ingest libraries like styled components or emotion. So let's implement components using styled system that we'll later use to implement our mockup. We've seen at the beginning. The first one is the box component. Box is the most basic layout primitive where you control styles with props. So, style system export uh, functions to create props for group of components, not components, the group of properties. For example, space create props for controlling white space, for padding and margins. Props like E for padding, ML for margin left, and so on. So, color has props for changing text and background color, border, has props for changing border, border radius, and so on. Layout is uh, left, right, and things like position, and Flexbox are all Flexbox properties. So we're creating a styled component, which is div by default, but using uh, as prop from styled component, we can change it to anything else. We're defining a more convenient box model, and then we pass all the functions from styled system to styled component styled components factory. And this is how, can we, how we can use this component to, for example, create something like a card. We define background, uh, color, we define border, border radius, and paddings. The next one is flex. It's very simple. We're, it's based on the box component and the only difference is that it says display flex by default. And it is just a shortcut to make markup slightly simpler. And we can use it like this to create this header layout. It is responsive. On small screens, it will render like a single column, and on larger screens, it will render in two columns with this left and right alignment. So we use uh, justify content, center and space between. Center on small screens, space between on larger screens. We allow wrapping on small screens and we say that the Vs of the first column will be either 100% or auto. So on small screens it will be 100%, making it single column layout, and on larger screens it will be auto, it will be squashed in two columns. And the last 
is this tech component. This is slightly more complicated. It's also based on the box, but we also set display grid by default, and we import all the grid properties from Stone system, so we can use it to create all CSS, CSS grid layouts. And here is one more custom properties called mean column width, which is useful to create stack layouts. And stack layouts is a layout where you have even white space between all children, horizontal and vertical. Imagine like a photo gallery or just a list of things. There are many ways to do this. For example, to define a negative margin in the container, or in the future we'll be able to use gap property with Flexbox, which is not well supported yet. And I think uh, CSS Grid, if you can use it on your project, is probably the easiest way for now. You can download this component from NPM. It's slightly more complex than I'm showing it here. It has some additional features, but the basic idea is the same. Or you can create it yourself to make it uh, better for your requirements for the project. So this is the example, how can we use it? We have uh, three elements here, an icon, a heading, and a text, and we have the white space between them which is defined on the container level with the grid gap property. And this is how we can use the min column width property. We say that we want, we don't want uh, columns to be smaller than 12 Vmax, and if they will ever be smaller, the browser will, instead of making them smaller, will wrap them to the second line. So this layout is intrinsically responsive. We don't have any breakpoints here, but it works perfectly on any screen size. So the number of columns depends on screen size. And this is more complex layout, how we can use uh, stack and flex. We have a card similar to the one we've seen before. We have, we use flex to push button to the very bottom of the card. And we use stack to define white space between the heading, the text, and the rating. In the real project, you want copy-paste these chunks of markup every time you want to build a card. You will create a component for the card and then reuse this. So it may look something like this. We have, again, stack to create, to stack the cards. And then we'll loop over the items, dogs in this case, and for each dog we create a card. And we, in the card component, we use subcomponents to define layouts for cover, body, and the footer. You can create it as much as you like. Uh, probably for many cases, subcomponents would be overkill. For this case, it's, I think, convenient. Or you can create a card component and just pass everything as props. Also fine. And uh, now let's look at our mockup again. So did your opinion change? Can, can we make it with just components without writing manual styles? What do you think? Yeah? We think yes. Yeah. Oh, more people. Nice. Yeah, actually I lied to you at the beginning. It's not a mockup, it's a real page. Fully interactive. And I also have kind of X-ray thing here to show the components where they're used. So this is the box component. We're using for cards, for some white space in different places. This is the flex. Also centering, this header layout, a few other things. And the last one, the stack. Also, we've seen this one. This kind of feature component, we've seen this. 
and who enable all three. So basically, everything is implemented with just these components, just three components. And last thing here, it's responsive. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. You can play with the demo or look at the code. And here are the shortcuts to enable X-ray. So to recap, components are the new way of writing CSS. I believe that we will use components instead of writing CSS manually in the future because the syntax is more convenient. We can do some validations, constraints, and so on. Reuse your CSS knowledge. No need to invent new API every time. And the three components, box, flex, and stack, are enough to create almost any layout. For example, these slides are done in React and I use the same components for layouts here. Yeah, that's all from me. Thank you, and use components. And we're hiring in Berlin by Fair Office if you want to move to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice there, not as warm as here, but it's nice. Yeah, that's all, thank you.